Hey everyone, welcome back to the 13 Reasons Why After Show here at After Buzz TV. Tonight we're going to be breaking down Season 2, Episodes 5 and 6. We have a lot to talk about, like I think a new ship named, what are we calling it? Zekenna. Zekenna. Nope, that was wrong. <laughs> Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin hello guys thank you so so much again for tuning in to our 13 reasons why after show here at after buzz tv i am your host sam davidson and i meant to say zahanna that is the ship uh, name it was of this. i tried it so many times in my car but guess what it didn't work out please introduce yourselves guys yes i am takira shabre and i'm cammy and we are also in the live chat Please let us know your thoughts. We love, love interacting and hearing with you. Hearing with you. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> hearing what you have to say. Thank you. There you go. Spending hearing. time with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Spending time with you all. <laughs> and we've really loved talking to you guys, hearing your tweets, and just interacting on the comments. So please, please keep it coming because this is a really interesting show to talk about for sure. And just to remind everyone once again, we're going to do this <laughs> show spoiler filled pretty much <laughs> you might have some moments where there's not any spoilers but we might just throw them out so if you haven't seen yeah. every episode of this show then you know maybe wait until the end and come back thou shall be known yes and i'm bad for them too so you know i'm glad you give that alert ahead of time <laughs> yeah you know just gotta let you know <laughs> yes. because it is really interesting this new medium that we're doing this in because we all watch it at once mm -hmm. I, there are not a lot of people with self-control, I think, in this world. Right. I am definitely not one of them, but there's some right. people. So out of respect for you guys, we're just going to be spoiling it. Yeah. What did you both think of these two episodes? I loved hearing more about Zach because I really liked him. And Ryan, I was really interested because I know the first time around we didn't get too, too much, but just that he published her story. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, I liked both of the episodes. I felt like with Zach's, I fell in love. It was so cute. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Ryan's, um, I felt a little, like, connect not connection with him, but I liked him more. Yeah. yeah. I sure. honestly think these are my two favorite mm. episodes of the entire season. And oh, really? when I was re-watching Zach's episode, I in my long, long notes, I put, this is a Nicholas Sparks novel turned into a <laughs> <Yes>. movie. <laughs> and I just, it was, the thing is, is that I did have some continuity problems mm -hmm. with that story and the way the whole thing plays out. It's my favorite episode of the season, but also I think it's the most unrealistic and out there. But Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, we'll, to yeah, we'll, we'll get into we'll it. We'll have to hear about that. We, of course, have Ryan's testimony first. And I agree with you, Cammie. I did really start to like Ryan more mm -hmm. and understand him. Mm -hmm. And we see more scenes between him and Hannah, which is always really fun and interesting. And this other side of Justin, that Hannah was still communicating with Justin, according to Ryan. Mm -hmm. What did you guys think about that? Were you surprised? Did you think he was lying? I was surprised. I was, um, I didn't think he was lying. Uh, I was very surprised and shocked uh, that Hannah would be texting this guy after everything he's done to her. Um, but then I, I had to think to myself, like, you know, that it, it's natural. It's uh, this is a relatable character because if someone's going to apologize, like we don't want a sour relationship with anyone. So I understand why she would be texting him and, and uh, just trying to be cordial. Yeah, I think we struggle with that as, when, well, I mean, as men too, just people. Sometimes you, when you're bored, when you are just dying for some type of love and yeah. connection, it's like you, you just do dumb stuff. Exactly. And so yes. she was such, she was in such a vulnerable place that, I mean, I didn't really believe that it was Justin. I don't know. I thought it was Zach. So, yeah. But I can see how people would think that it's Justin. I guess that would be the reason why. But that makes sense. I didn't really think it was Justin. That just brought some new revelations. Well, she to me. was. <laughs> she was texting him. I think it was confirmed, right? Mm -hmm. Because he then Justin met her at the coffee shop, and we mm -hmm. see this whole thing that Ryan was right. actually her friend. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. that he was worried about her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's just, I almost wish that w- the way we see this season, it's this overlay of almost photos and like film, mm-hmm. and you're trying to mm-hmm. figure out what scene went before, <laughs> before what we saw last season yeah. and whose mind this is in. Mm-hmm. True. And I do think that the point of each episode being a testimony is we are seeing it through the lens of that character mm-hmm. more specifically. Mm-hmm. But it was, you know, Ryan, I think, is a better kid than we thought he was last season. He yes, stops yeah. by Mrs. Baker's house and apologizes to her. And yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I think he was super alarmed to go in there and see basically her map of mm-hmm. clues. Yeah, especially when she brought up the journal. And yeah. we'll get to that for sure. But yeah, definitely then. Because he still lied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, so... Mrs. Baker has, you're talking about in this episode when Mrs. Baker has been going through the journal? The poem. Yeah, the, the poem. The poem book. Yeah, yeah. The journal. Poem journal. Yeah. I, oh, goodness. I was, I was a little mad at him when he, when he lied about that. Mm-hmm. But now that I think about it, I think it just still goes to show about who he was. Um, I, we figured out that he was, I, I want to say he was ripping out the the pages because he just liked her writing so much. Is that the case, or did I interpret that wrong? Um, you know what? Because I, well, you know, I'm not a weirdo. I'm sure somebody else out there did it. Mm-hmm. I froze the screen, took a picture of what he ripped. It took me like 18 efforts, <laughs> but it ended up being, which again, still kind of proves that he's a good person, but just caring about someone else. Um, it ended up being a, he stole the poem or the story about um, the interaction between that random guy that called him and Tony gay or a faggot or uh, I forgot exactly the term. Uh, I want to say maybe he, he called them a little bit something more vulgar. Yeah. But um, that's what it was about, oh. about um, that stranger calling Tony and him names. And if you recall, that's when... Tony went crazy and beat the guy up and then that in turn and and ran so if someone else would have had that that would have been Tony's final strike and then you know towards the end of the episode we see Ryan you know told Tony hey you have nothing to worry about so that's what all of that and it had a mix of the uh, Mrs. Baker versus Mrs. Baker about dad and mom too so oh interesting interesting yeah. okay that makes that zoomed on in that bad boy. yeah very good very that's good. crucial info. yeah <laughs> let us know if you guys yeah. caught that um yeah, either let's talk about mrs baker so she her husband has finally come to be by her side and mm-hmm. we learn out you know learn a little bit more about him later in the season and this is one of the reasons too i think that knowing what's going to happen. I always find things a little bit more fascinating when I see characters' subtle hints at things and kind of him just being a bit of a jerk. Even though mm-hmm. his actions are nice that we see, he's trying to show up for his wife and for his daughter. Do- They're not. And we find yeah. he's been gone. How do you just find a girlfriend mm-hmm. in this amount of time? And I think maybe men cope differently. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but it... <laughs> at all I think it's so yeah. gross yeah but he uh, I'm just like stop trying to act so nice yeah I didn't I didn't like it and I hopped um I knew instantly that he was doing it for a different reason um and then we later find out which I think he was only doing it because he wanted her to sign the divorce papers like I, I'm sure he needed closure as well but I definitely did not see him staying very long mm-hmm But um, Mrs. Baker, I feel, is a very strong woman. To be going through that and also dealing with your husband, being with another woman during this tough time, she has so much strength. Um, And I never wish that on anybody because that's a hard thing to go through, not having one of the closest people by your side Mm -hmm. to get you through this. Yeah, and doing it alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she sees that he has this new life and it's – I like it when I see flashbacks of Mrs. Baker because we see how a lot... Because Kate Walsh... Kate Walsh is actually a stand-up comedian. Yeah. She is it's such crazy. a... crazy. I know. She, and she does a lot of dark stuff. Yeah. At, but she always brings lightness to it, mm-hmm. not with this character. To, to balance that, like just real day life, mm-hmm. to balance comedy and then something like this, mm-hmm. that is so hard. I want to know what she does like to get in and out of that character. Yeah. yeah. Meditation, you know, whatever the case may be. That's tough. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, definitely is. And 
I, I like seeing her happy in those flashbacks mm-hmm. is what, you know, but we don't really see a lot of her being happy, which is totally normal and okay, but it's also why this yeah. season, I don't want to say it's not as fun, it's not like last season was fun, but it was a little bit more curious and lighthearted, I guess, and this is just so sad. Oh, really? Yeah, I find it more sad. Mm-hmm. You think uh, season one was curious and lighthearted? It wasn't lighthearted but it, at all, but it was more kind of you saw, you learned who this girl was, so you saw a lot of lighter sides of her. Mm-hmm. Got you. That's and okay. now it's just everyone is sad. So, mm-hmm. I don't okay. know. Let us know what you guys think, because mm-hmm. I think the show evokes a lot of different emotions in people. Yeah, it definitely yeah. does, for sure. So Alex is really, really struggling, and he, poor kid, still can't get it up, you know? Yeah. Oh, well. He, Not anymore. He got it up, eventually. <laughs> yeah, he but did. I know we'll talk about that. But, he yeah, <laughs> he's struggling with that piece, like porn and, you know, trying to talk to older women. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean. Poor guy. If I were a guy, Zach Dempsey would probably make me get it up, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Zach, guy or girl? <laughs> guy or girl. But we see him really struggling and Clay is asking him have you listened to the tapes he's just trying to wrap his brain and his body around Mm -hmm. what he's done to himself and I don't even think we as viewers have really accepted that this kid shot himself in the head he will have problems for the rest of his life I don't think it's just going to be like any other show and go oh he'll be fine in a few episodes yeah and he's being so impatient with himself I think we are so hard on ourselves Mm -hmm. anyway and the fact that he I mean, he survived something so tragic, and he is pushing himself to remember every single detail and watch the tapes and read his letter and just bring all of this back. He just needs to chill. Mm -hmm. Like, I I get it that he really wants to help Hannah, but in order to help someone else, you have to help yourself first. I feel so bad for him. I do, too. Uh, There's just this element of, like, powerless that I'm seeing through him, Um, and it's really sad, but... I, I get it, right? He doesn't remember that he how like how he came about shooting himself. What happened a month before? Like he feels like he can't really do anything, um, and it's really uh, that scene. Uh, we're gonna get into it, but it's just he just sees himself himself as a really powerless person. Mm. So it's really sad. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. I mean, he. My big question, too, I think we've talked about this, is why Zach is continuing to help him so much. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of gone a little un, uh, unanswered. And I mean, I think, you know, they're just high school friends, and he just feels obligated. Their parents are really close. But I kind of feel like, is that it? And I, I'm kind of in the same boat, because they're all kind of friends and they've all kind of been around each other for a while so I'm kind Mm -hmm. of in the same boat I would be interested to see them um you know later down the road if at all wink wink possible (laughs) that they kind of uh explore that area a little bit more explore Zach and Alex true and and I know that we see in the next episode at some point um he mentions Zach mentions that he's thinking you know at sometimes he's thought about suicide so I think Mm -hmm. I think also just him uh kind of connecting with uh Alex on that like Alex Uh, you know shot himself and I think he kind of sees himself kind of through him in a sense Mm -hmm. and is probably being there to support him through this because he knows what he's going through that's a good point yeah and I think he feels a lot of guilt too of course Mm -hmm. oh yeah any opportunity he can he's trying to make make it better yeah make it better and to prove that he's not like all of his ridiculously jerk friends yeah exactly yeah. and i also just want to remind you guys that we love 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 giving you these shows and we would really appreciate a review rating on itunes leave a comment we all read them as well as youtube but itunes giving us ratings really really helps us out and again we love hearing yeah. from you so please please continue to do so so after uh, Alex, of course, we have Jessica. She has a scene with Chloe, which is, again, infuriating. Oh, my gosh. I like that scene. Me, too. Ugh. I like that scene. Um, <laughs> first of all, someone needed to tell Chloe. Like, she's just being ridiculous. She's clueless. Yes. Um, and I feel like Chloe felt like... Um, Jessica was the clueless one. But Jessica pretty <laughs> much just switched it on her and was like, look, like... You, don't you see what's going on? So I really like that Jessica oh. confronted her. Yeah. 
And I think Chloe needs to get the point. Like, you're not going to like everyone in this world. Mm -hmm. Like, not everyone's going to like you. You're not going to like anyone. Like, there's nothing wrong with just stopping moving on mm -hmm. and existing like she it's like she's trying to not mention this weird elephant in the room mm -hmm. that hey your current boyfriend you know rapes me mm -hmm. and just talk, just move on you mm -hmm. don't have to be friends For real. and that's what gets under my skin so <laughs> much i'm like just like stop just don't talk to me mm -hmm. you don't have to just i move just on. I don't understand this character's M.O. at all because there's part of me that feels for her that thinks she's just extremely ignorant mm. and is maybe has something in her family that she just turns things off in a way mm. but is perhaps following a similar pattern to what she's seen. There has to be some reason behind it because it's bizarre behavior. Yeah. She continues... At the same time, he's the most popular guy. Bryce is the most popular guy in school. Yeah. Right. And I think at the very pit of her, I think maybe she knows or knew the whole time. Like, this Bryce guy, I get it. He's the jock. He's the head guy in charge, you know, for the school. I think at the pit of her stomach that she kind of knew or had a feeling that he was perfectly capable of doing this. And she's just looking for a reason to, to cover it up or to convince herself that that he's not so that he's that. a great guy yeah yeah so maybe she's struggling with that herself just you know struggling getting to the truth yeah. definitely jessica goes to her i think i'm assuming it's sexual assault support group mm -hmm. it's really i think it's such a good thing especially just in general i think group therapy is awesome yes and 100%. i really like that they're showing that mm -hmm. yeah i i what's so interesting to me is that she finds different ways to try to get her story out or get things off of her mind and cope with that. Um, I don't know if you guys meant, uh, noticed, but I, I kind of saw the connection between her and Ryan drawing circles. Did any of you catch that? I noticed yes. Ryan's. I, I don't, saw I the didn't circle. notice hers. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see hers either. Hers was kind of like an eight. Like she drew a circle at the top and then she mm. drew a circle down at the bottom. So it wasn't like a, a connected eight. It was just like two circles and one on top of each other. So it kind of... I, I was like, okay, is it a meditation? Is it a therapy technique or something like that? But it was interesting. When I looked up circles and, uh, and those that draw them... Uh, it says those who draw circles tend to be flexible, imaginative, emotional. So mm. I was like, okay, Ryan, imaginative, like he's very artsy and finds the things in, in writing. And then she's obviously emotional. But it also said that it's kind of a um, I feel left out in the world expression mm -hmm. and that you're like searching for unity and, and cope. Uh, coping like peace so I thought that was so interesting like the little details of the show whether it was intentional I definitely think that it was intentional Probably. yeah um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just a little interesting tip do you guys not draw circles I do I draw yeah. circles I, I mean, it's kind of like relaxing but mm -hmm. I never really looked into the yeah that is really winter. interesting mm -hmm. yeah well Justin returns to school and it's <laughs> some big cafeteria showdown mm. And it's, you know, it's very sad. He confronts Jessica. She says, basically, she, she, I think she says she wishes he I was wish dead. I wish you were dead. Yeah. yeah. How could you say something I like know. that? Like, especially Hannah being your friend. Like, I know she's hurting inside, but jeez. Yeah, that, that was really harsh. It, it was I, horrible. And what I don't get is that I don't understand how everyone is treating Bryce like he hasn't done anything and then Justin who's at least tried to stick up and um, confront him he's the one that's being treated horribly yeah yeah I instantly thought when he came into the cafeteria I was like holy crap he's going to shoot up the school mm. he's going to do something especially when he he just got told no by Jessica and he has this huge bag I'm thinking oh crap what's mm. in the bag and then he sees Bryce and says, you. Yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, he's going to whip out a gun and he's going to totally shoot Ugh. him. And then for a second, the evil side of me was so down for that. And then I was like, wait, don't do it. That's horrible. That's not what this is about. <laughs> and then he just passes out. I was like, oh, well, this and that anti <laughs> But it was, you know, I get it. It's, it was still emotional. But. Yeah, it was, it was really emotional. It was mm -hmm. hard. And I do think Justin's journey is an interesting one that we see this season. Mm -hmm. Got to do a quick mention to Clay because this was an important thing is that the, this episode was called The Chalk Machine, and it was because him seeing The Chalk Machine inspires him <laughs> to look up 
I don't really understand how he did I this. I didn't know. Yeah. It, you know, is this the chalk from the school? It ha- of course it's someone from the school. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's what he concluded. So we'll get to that in a later episode, I'm sure. But next we have to talk about Mr. Porter, who had a brick Ugh. thrown through his car. It says, know your place. And he really is trying to make everything right. And he ends up getting in a physical fight mm-hmm. with Justin's mother's junkie boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And it, I just, I think he's by far the, he's the protagonist of the season. Clay to yes. me isn't anymore. Yes. It's more Mr. Porter than yeah. Clay. I agree. Um, I, I, oh, I love this character. I me absolutely too. love this character. And I feel like he is so realistic because he is truly battling, trying to do the right thing. And, okay, well, how do I do the right thing? I don't know how to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it's so realistic because I feel like if uh, it's us in real life, like we know that someone needs help, but we have no idea how to tackle it. And then you make all of these horrible mistakes that probably make it worse before it makes it better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just this up and down. Yeah. Um, It's, yeah. But... I, I, again, just absolutely love him, and I think that it's interesting that we're seeing the story more through his eyes than Mm -hmm. we were last season, Mm -hmm. because I wasn't that angry with him at the end of last season. I was, but I also felt so bad for him because people make mistakes, and his job is really hard, but I remember last season people go, he's the worst. He's the one that caused all... Yeah, I remember a lot of people were saying that, you know, she told him, but I just... I really feel for him. And mm-hmm. Yeah. And that love, was love, love really brave of him to oh. go up to Justin's mom and and try to, you know, get her to convince her that Justin needs a home. Um, but I was scared for him. I yeah. I didn't know what Justin's mom's boyfriend was going to do, if he was going to whip out a gun or, mm-hmm. you know, just beat him to death. Yeah. I was scared. But that, I'm glad yeah. he got out of there safely. Well, were you Very guys, so. you know, worried that he's an African American man coming oh, into these oh, white yeah. people's house. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> yeah, like, especially when the police were coming. Yeah, and then he, the police got him. I was like, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen now. As soon as the fight broke out, I was like, oh Lord, here we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here we go. Mm-hmm. I know. I definitely was worried, but it ended up being all right. Yeah. Of course, you know we have Bryce, who is absolutely <laughs> infuriating and. Pretty sure, I mean, not pretty sure, they're all taking steroids. Mm-hmm. It's just that they're shooting each other up. Zach's and not. Nope, Zach's not, but he's, Bryce wants to know if Zach is a snitch, and Zach is just, he's so scared, and he he just Who's Zach or Bryce? Zach. Okay. He just That's builds right. so much mm-hmm. inside of oh, him mm-hmm. all the time. We get to see that next episode. But Bryce does take Chloe to dinner at his family's house. This is a very fascinating scene. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. Because, first of all, Bryce's dad... Bryce is asking advice, you know, Mm. do you like her? Do you think mom likes her? Oh, she's loyal. It's the father knows that the wife needs to be loyal because she's privy to terrible things that the men do. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And and especially with him going up in court, she's just an accessory. And he's like, you did good, son. You don't know crap about her, but she's pretty. Mm -hmm. She won't snitch on you. Good job, son. This father is horrible. Um, Mm -hmm. He seems off to me. I feel like maybe in in, uh, before he must have done something because that whole Mm -hmm. scene just seemed really off. Like, she's loyal. Well, that's good. Well, Mm -hmm. and then you see Bryce's mother look at the bruise Mm -hmm. Chloe has on her from, Mm -hmm. and it it was from when they were having sex. Or no, well, she said it was from cheerleading. I because Bryce is pretty rough with her, and I think that mm-hmm. she recognized the bruise, yeah. and I think she's most likely a victim of abuse as well. Do you from think her it's by husband. the father? Well, no, I think the the bruise on Chloe's arm is from, from Bryce. Bryce. Oh no, I'm talking about the mom. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, I, I definitely absolutely. So. Yeah, because there's something about that. There's this, like tension. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, next we have Tyler and Cyrus. They make these asshole shirts. They're just mm-hmm. trying to be angry in every way that they possibly can. Tyler gets confronted about taking Cyrus to shoot actual guns because of a neighbor. Mm-hmm. Saw them, obviously, says they were BB guns, and that's that. We'll get into next episode when this mm. becomes just a very bad choice of a parenting yeah, um, I- thing. Yeah, I... I hate the way that his mother confronted him. It just it, very passive, very, very. Um, afraid, but not. Um, I don't know. She when when he originally said, uh, "Oh, the music, music is, you know, what it's playing," and she said, "Oh, it sounds angry." He was like, "Well, they are angry about what? About everything." 
she should have been like been a parent and said well are you angry about anything mm-hmm. what are what what yeah. are you angry about is there anything that you talk about but then she just kind of I don't know do more like parents are so like nowadays sometimes I'm not a parent so obviously <laughs> I can't speak from that particular area but what I would have wanted for my mom is to step in be stern at the end of the day you're still the parent and he is still your son yeah um, ask talk Absolutely. because you know the end could have not happened mm-hmm. you know Well, that leads us to next episode, guys, which is episode six, The Smile at the End of the Dock. And, of course, I think this is my personal favorite episode of the entire second season. We hear all about Zach Dempsey and his testimony. So we see some awesome, awesome, awesome flashbacks that him and Hannah actually had a summer of love, like, from Greece or The Notebook. I mean, it (laughs) it, was... It was so cute. I just wanted them to burst out into song sometimes. You know, so they had a meet, meet cute at a movie theater, at her movie theater where she worked, where it all began. They had this beautiful romance. Mm-hmm. They decide to lose their virginities to each other. She's the only person he can really talk to about the death of his father. But later, you know, Bryce and Monty end up tearing him down. And... Mm-hmm. We see the same writing on the hand, or what did it say? It was in his locker. It was in. Oh yeah. It said Hannah, right? With the 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 blood, blood in in the panties. Yes, in yeah. the panties. Present day. Yes. Present day after mm-hmm. they found out. Yeah. Yeah, sure. and it's the same writing that's on all of the other. I think on the photos. Probably. It appears kind of, but yeah. It appears it to appears be. It appears to be, yeah. What did you guys, what was your reaction to this entire, were you as happy as I was? No, With maybe Zach not. and, and yeah. Hannah? And Hannah. Oh, yes. It, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think this is the first time that we've seen a really affectionate, like, romantic, sweet, loving story mm-hmm. in, with, within the whole series. Um, it was definitely a shocker. I had no idea this was happening. I know, right? But it was so beautiful. I, th- this was the sweetest thing ever. And um, I was so happy that they found each other for that time. Yeah, I... I different thought, different view. Yes, I was happy, but I was also kind of pissed instantly because as soon as I found out about them I was like oh okay so that's a big hurt because my my mind instantly went back to they didn't talk that much on you know during the semester that she killed herself Mm -hmm. and it just made me so angry that he took so long to uh to stand up to grab his cojones and really own his relationship with Hannah yeah because a lot of the times when people feel suicidal or depressed, obviously hurt from someone else or for themselves, kind of underlines that. And, you know, mm-hmm. no one wants to be rejected like that in public. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we can have sex, but, you know, we just keep it our little secret. But he's dealing with it all now. We see that throughout mm-hmm. the yeah. whole season. I mean, he realized that a lot of the things that he's done is because he assumed something and this is what happened. Like, Hannah ended up being frustrated mad at him and um he regrets that well again this is one of those moments i wish we had all of these kind of film strips on top of each other to match where and when all this happened Mm -hmm. i mean we know Mm -hmm. it's the summer but still this was my biggest it was again like i said my favorite thing of the season but also my biggest issue with the season because if she lost her virginity to him he holds a place near and dear in her heart there is no way she would not have brought that up on the tapes Mm -hmm. during his tape i thought of that and for a second i thought that he was maybe lying but then i was like you know what this is zach i don't really think that he would lie um and i questioned myself on that like why i I get that they want to keep it their secret but who cares like Do, do you think maybe she didn't add it in the tape because maybe she didn't want no one to know because there was, you know, a chance that this would eventually get out to the public. Why not? She's she's killing herself. Yeah. Right. Honestly, I think the writers mm-hmm. messed up. I mm-hmm. think that they... Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I think it's a big kind of gap in the story. Mm-hmm. Oh, and okay. there's so many ways that they could have, you know, yeah. maybe he got a private letter or a pri- somehow was delivered a separate private tape. I don't mm-hmm. know. They could have figured out a device mm-hmm. because that would have been a big trigger for her. Yeah. Well, they do bring up a letter that she wrote to him because 
he supposedly he was the only one that she truly other than Mr. Porter truly confessed that she was wanting to kill herself right and I zoomed in on that letter too Uh, and it just brings up up things like you know you your friends act like a jerk I thought you were different Um, but you know now I see that you're just like them you know during the Valentine you didn't stick up for me with Marcus you know why didn't you ask me to be your Valentine like the crumbled up letter yeah. He did kind of get spit. So it's kind of like it was their puzzle to tie that piece, that, that gap that irritated you okay. so much. You know, but I, it's like they, you're right. they tried, but I can kind of see where you think, like, they were like, oh, crap, that's a really good idea. Let's write that in. Because mm. it was a good idea to have them as yeah. a relationship. But, yeah. But that's what that letter said. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> what wasn't as fun to watch, of course, is Mr. Porter being bullied by the coach. Oh, that got under. Gotta love that blackmail. Oh. Very subtle. It got under my <laughs> skin. First of all, my rant when, when Coach said, oh, I vouch for you. We'll keep it our little secret. Please. Man. I, I am not your boys on the team. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to control me by fear. There is nothing that I owe you. And there's, it, oh, it got under my skin. Okay. I, I could not stand it. I wanted him. Like I'm like, you know what? He wasted a good punch. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't have even punched Seth. He should have wasted, like, punched <laughs> the coach right then and there. You wasted a good punch. Mm-hmm. It, it really got under Such my skin. Such an awful coach, by the way. Oh. I mean, the way we see him uh, dealing with the – the athletes is horrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I think at some point, m- maybe it was in this episode or the episode before, they're all fighting. And mm-hmm. he's just like, keep your mind pretty much on the game. Like, stop this and just keep your mind on the game. Like, how about yeah. trying to fix this issue, talk to them, figure out what's going on? He's a horrible coach. Well, he did say that he doesn't care who they are outside of the uh, the diamond. I mean, he's like, I don't care who you are outside. He, you like, should. <laughs> like, as coaches, like, I'll never, my brother's coach, I'll never forget, he didn't just, like, he coached them, he did their thing, but he would always take them out to dinner and actually, like, talk about things. Like, mm-hmm. he said, football was not on the table, we're not discussing football, we're discussing uh, how is your uh, relationship with your family, how is your grades going, what what are you worried about in college, you know, how are you mentally ha- happily as a man? They were like a life coach. It's like a life coach, exactly, like you have to be a that's coach important. in the game. And like, yeah, yeah, that's I, very important. Have you guys because, ever seen Friday Night Lights? I mean, come on, that's oh, well, exactly yeah. Yeah. what they did. Yeah, <laughs> you can't expect to have athletes and not understand that they have their they have these other lives mm-hmm. and ha- this can get into the game this could yeah. block them in so many ways yeah. like you need to be there to figure out what's going on mm-hmm. it's crazy well of course also we again have tyler we briefly mentioned it about his desire to shoot guns and that he already has and so tyler's dad Got to give a shout out to the guy from Clueless. Love him. <laughs> right. Elton. Uh, so he gets Alex's dad, to, who's a cop, to show them how to shoot guns. And it's, mm-hmm. this is by far the biggest, one of the biggest foreshadowing mm-hmm. scenes. And it's, a, and the parent, it's so frustrating because everyone's trying to fix what they did. The adults are yeah. trying to do right by the kids, but they keep on messing up. Holy God. Moldy. Badly, yeah, because you because they don't want another uh, Hannah. Uh, and you say the parents keep messing up. Yeah, the oh, parents, the adults. I mean, look, <laughs> both of the Alex's dad and Tyler's dad go. Let's teach these boys mm-hmm. how to shoot real guns. Which I don't understand how that was a good alternative instead of BB really? guns. Instead of BB guns, or not even just BB guns. Instead of telling them, "Do not shoot." Like, why are you guys shooting? And the fact that it's Alex's father who's teaching them too, like, hello, your son just shot himself just it's not too long ago. You yeah. know what? That that's such a good. Um, this is obviously a really large debate, right? I mean, the question of is is his dad enabling him or not? And so, you know, you ladies say that uh, it's not a good idea, but I'm going to kind of disagree with you there, like. Um, and I know, and I know that this this is really controversial, mm-hmm. but and maybe it's just from where I'm from. I'm from Tennessee. This is just something that we learn. But I definitely think um, that it was a smart move, just because. And I know a lot of people think I'm crazy when you think about um, 
all of the many things that your parents hid from you the moment that you got the opportunity to do it for yourself. Because at the end of the day, please please believe you're going to do it yourself if you're that curious. You go buck wild. And I think that, again, it could be the home that I come from. Uh, If you teach someone how to properly handle a gun, the chances of there being a mistake, I feel like... um, is lessened now the age is always a a debate on you know when do you do Mm -hmm. that um but i definitely don't think i I see where they were coming from there it's just because look you're going to do it behind my back um i want to tell you like be clear look look you don't need to play with guns these are not toys these are not safe unless you're an adult like say all of those things and saying especially mentioning these are never the solution to any fight never be drunk never be emotional and when you put the your finger on the trigger you need to to you know be prepared to shoot they teach you that in class but um I, I feel like it was a it was an okay move to even, educate them. Even given what happens at the end of the season with Tyler's, uh, you just it would have happened. Yeah, either it way. would have it would have happened either way yeah. because if you if you back up, he was already sneaking into his dad's gun collection way before that. He knew how to shoot. Yeah, way before that. Ooh. So I don't know. was it who Alex or Tyler. Tyler? Tyler. I thought Tyler bought the guns. No, they're not his. He didn't buy them in season one. From he, someone? Well, yeah, no, he did buy them. Yeah, at the end of season one, he mm-hmm. did buy them from someone. So but he was sneaking into his dad's gun collection beforehand. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, lastly, uh, for this episode, we are going to talk about Clay, and he finally finds out what the clubhouse is and that it exists. Sherry is just the clutch move of the entire season. She's like the fairy godmother. That just knows that, you know, she's been to juvie, mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's smart as hell, and she's a cheerleader, or an ex-cheerleader. <laughs> so, he is, Clay is so upset about this news from Zach. He's devastated. He thought that he was somehow Hannah's only love. Number one guy. Yeah, but it's not true, and so he has all these terrible thoughts about her going through his head, and Mrs. Baker, after seeing Zach's testimony, says, please, Clay loved her, you have to say good things about mm-hmm. her she's not the person I thought she was either but she begs him to what did you guys think about that did you think it was fair of Mrs. Baker to do that did you think that Clay's feelings were fair I thought it was fair mm. I thought it was fair I think um at least fair for the trial right because if Clay is to go in there and just be stuck in his feelings and not they're still not going to be able to understand who really um and I don't think anyone really knows who Hannah is but or Hannah was um but he would have been just stuck in his feelings and I thought it was really important and 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 good of uh, Mrs. Baker to tell him look just forget about all that and I want you to come in and talk about who Hannah was to you because that's very important here um because I think Clay is really stuck on this should have been it should have been me and Hannah and rather than Zach and Hannah. So I, I'm glad she made it clear to him. Yeah. Think straight here. Absolutely. I think it was. Uh, to, to ask Clay to testify was a selfish move. I feel like she was. She just tossed it up because she wanted someone to feel, uh, to say good things about her, but she didn't take into consideration Clay's emotions. Justin, yeah. though, has an interesting opinion about all of it, which I loved. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the episode, first of all, we figure out that Justin, well, his parent, Clay's parents figure out Justin's living in the house. Right. And there's also the scene where Justin sees someone coming into the house and doesn't know who it is, someone in a hoodie. So there's a lot going on there, but when Clay and Justin are having the scene where they break all this down, and by the way, Clay's parents are the absolute best. At least his father is, I yeah. think. Mm-hmm. His, I still don't trust them all. <laughs> yeah. But Justin says, do you have any idea how many girls I've slept with? And just, mm-hmm. and he, it's, this is, this is the first moment I thought, I really like you, Justin, beyond you being kind of a sad, very attractive character, because you feel bad for him sometimes. It's like, oh, and he's so cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is the point where I thought, thank you, Justin. Like, you actually are saying something that is right, that is good. Hannah doesn't deserve Clay to be thinking that about yeah. her. That's what everyone else did. That's why she killed herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was a really special moment. I thought this is, 
finally the time I'm starting to root for Justin. I just loved his double standard. He brought awareness to a double standard that yes. men can have sex and do whatever with however many, but the moment that one that the woman does it, they're labeled as a slut or whatever. So mm -hmm. uh, And you begin to believe that about yourself. So mm -hmm. yeah. kudos, and writers. Bring up that double standard. Yes. I wish it could have happened earlier, though. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, like, in the flashbacks. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, before we get into some really interesting news and gossip, we again have a special segment we want to share with you guys about a, a suicide prevention nonprofit that is awesome. Yes. Um, so to, uh, we are highlighting American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Established in 1987, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is a voluntary health organization that gives those affected by suicide a nationwide community empowered by research, education, and advocacy to take action against the leading cause of death. AFSP is dedicated to saving lives and bringing hope to those affected by suicide. Um, they create a culture that's smart about men mental health by engaging in the following Following core strategies, funding scientific research, educating the public about mental health and suicide prevention, advocating for public policies and mental health and suicide prevention, and supporting si survivors of suicide loss and those affected by suicide in their mission. Yeah, um, yeah so if you guys want to learn more, um, please visit their site, www.afsp.org, for more info. Um, there you can find also a discussion guide that they've contributed to to help um, those of you viewers of 13 Reasons Why. Um, they also have great tips for parents out there who want to talk to their kids um, about the show and about mm. suicide. So yeah. check out their site. That's big. Yes. Sure. And next we have some news and gossip. After Buzz yeah. TV News. Okay, so a couple things. This obviously, we have one good news and one bad news gossip mm. situation. Uh, I guess I will cover the good news, which is that 13 Reasons Why has officially been picked up for a season three at Netflix. Yay! So, season three, congratulations! Yes. And Catherine Langford will no longer be there, but it's okay. It's okay, they can switch it up. Yeah, we still got a nice transition. and. Mm. Some sad news that we have that does relate to suicide and suicide prevention is Kate Spade, one of our favorite, favorite designers. She has been a huge, huge, huge Hollywood and fashion icon for years, ever since I can remember. She uh, committed suicide this week and mm -hmm. she apparently, you know, had mental illness and, but everyone, everyone gets depressed, it's true. and. Mm -hmm. There, it's not really fair to just say she had mental illness. That's really, it's not fair. Yeah. Right. You know? I definitely think it's just a reminder that we need to make sure that we do what we need to do to get the proper care. Yes. Speak, mm -hmm. say something to mm -hmm. someone. Friends are not always the go-to. Um, you need to surround yourself with people that um, have been in your shoes to be your support system and just find a way to, to say it. Find a way to, to get across your help, mm -hmm. for sure. Your Absolutely. need for help. And there's lots of different things coming out in the news. It's 13 Reasons Why. After watching the show, it's it's really interesting how you kind of look at things differently. And when these things happen in the world, you kind of think what must have been going through their heads. Yeah. And yeah. it's really, really sad. Our thoughts go, uh, thoughts go out to uh, Kate Spade and her family and her daughter, yeah. of course. You know, yeah. everyone leaves someone behind, a lot of people behind she she yeah. left. So It's always good to focus on the positive, which I love because we do that. We try to do that with our other segment, which is kind of nice, yeah. too. So Yeah. So please, guys, visit, uh, you know, visit the nonprofit we spoke about this mm -hmm. week, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, if you want more information. And we are going to have a great, great show for you guys next week. So thank you all for tuning in. Yay. Where can everyone find you on social media, Cami? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Kamisha Latour. Yes, and you can find me, Takira Shabray, on Instagram and Twitter at Takira underscore Shabray. And don't forget to post your reasons why not. It's so important to focus on the amazing things. I will give a shout out next week on an amazing person that shared their story. So thank you. Continue to post those. Mm -hmm. Yes, please, please, please continue to post those. We're going to get to those next week, definitely. I'm Sam Davidson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at SamD43, SamDavidsonEntertainment.com. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.
From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.